Hi, I'm Michael Tanel with Touch Digital, and in this video I'm going to show you how to manage your applications and application jump lists using a great menu editor for GTK based Linux distros called Menu Libre. Here's the breakdown list for this video. First, I'll address the reasons you may want to consider installing a menu editor. Then, we're going to check out the available options of menu editors. Obviously, Menu Libre is the main subject of this video, but there is another option that is arguably just as good, if not better in some cases. Next, I'm going to walk through Menu Libre and show why I think it's one of the best options. Then we'll create a new entry with Menu Libre for the open source first person shooter, Xenotic. Finally, I'm going to show you how you can use Menu Libre to edit jump lists in your preferred Linux distro. There are many reasons to use a menu editor like editing existing items, moving applications to different categories, and much more. But the most important reason, I'd say, is the ability to create new items, allowing you to launch applications that aren't being handled by the distro's package manager. For example, some applications like Xenotic, SuperTux Cart, Shotcut, and more are providing static self-contained packages instead of using the package manager. Due to not using the package manager, a menu item is not automatically being added. This is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because packages are easier to create for developers since they only have to create one download for everyone. But it also means that the menu items have to be added manually. There are a few options for menu editors, but for GTK users it boils down to just two, a la carte and menu libre. The other options are either too limited or haven't been updated in years to address them in this video. There's one other menu editor that I'd say rivals Menu Libre as the best editor, and that's KMenu Edit, the menu editor for KDE Plasma. We're discussing GTK based distros in this video, so I'm not going to address KMenu Edit any further other than to say it's freaking awesome. Quick note though, for KDE Plasma users, I already did a video on KMenu Edit, so you can find a link to that video in the cards and in the video description. Instead of doing a walkthrough on both applications, I'm just going to do one on Menu Libre, because a la carte is limited to only the essentials. A la carte lets you add and edit the names, commands, icons, and comments of an item, but that's basically it. Menu Libre is developed by Sean Davis of the Zubuntu team, so naturally Menu Libre is by default the menu editor for Zubuntu. Menu Libre is not the default menu editor for any other distribution that I could find, because most distributions don't come with a menu editor at all. But even the few that do, they use a la carte. Hopefully in time, distros who have a menu editor will gravitate towards Menu Libre, and those who don't will consider it, because in my opinion, it's by far the best option for GTK-based distros. First, let's look at the structure of Menu Libre. Menu Libre splits up the user interface, or UI, in two columns. The left column contains the categories and menu items, while the right side is used for editing contents and options. I find this interesting because if you look at the comparison between Menu Libre and KMenu Edit side by side, you might notice a similarity. The Menu Libre developer did not use KMenu Edit's layout as a guide. The application gradually adopted this UI, so I find it interesting that two separate projects approach the problem in very different ways, resulting in very similar user interfaces. At the top of the window we have the header bar with the buttons for the app menu, create a new item, save changes, undo, redo, revert, and delete. Revert is similar to undo, but instead of one change, at a time it removes all current changes back to their previously saved state. After that we have the search box which is a vital feature for me because it makes it very easy to find the items that you want to edit. The left column of navigation is fairly straightforward so we're going to move on to the editing section. I have selected Firefox as an example because it has a default that somewhat irritates me and it gives me an opportunity to demonstrate the only usability problem I've found with Menu Libre. I don't care for the item name to contain the words web browser. I'd prefer just say Firefox. At first glance it doesn't look like you can edit this, but if you click on the name it will convert into an input field where you can make your changes, and once you're done with your changes you can just press enter on your keyboard 
or click on the check icon. And remember to click the save button, otherwise it won't be saved. The description of the item is edited in the same way as the item name. The command is what is used by the launcher to open a particular application. This is usually the same value as you'd use when launching an application from a terminal. Changing the working directory allows you to control where working files are, like temp files, rather than using the default. If you leave it blank, the default directory will be used. I'd recommend leaving this blank unless you have a specific reason to change it. Running an application in the terminal is fairly obvious what it will do, but this is a great option to have some applications need a terminal to run, and it can also be a great way to debug an app if you're experiencing issues. Use startup notification refers to feedback when opening an app. This could be many things, but usually it temporarily converts your cursor into a spinning icon. Hide from menus is an option to disable an application from being seen in the system menus. They can still be seen by the system, so it can still be launched in other ways. The next section is split into three tabs. The category section lets you control where the items are organized. The action section is where you can edit the values for jump lists. I'm going to save this for later in the video because Zubuntu does not have anything that utilizes jump lists by default, so I'll demonstrate this feature in a different distro. And then the advanced section is naturally where you'd find the advanced options. Before we continue with this section, I wanted to address the text at the bottom of the window. You'll see the location of where the launcher item is being stored. For Firefox, it is being stored in my user accounts home folder, located in the hidden.local folder. If we were to select Pigeon, we'll see that the location is user share applications in the root file system. This is because instead of editing the system menu directly, MenuLibre creates a copy of the item in your home folder when you make changes. I have not made any changes to Pigeon, so it will still use the system item. Now let's take a closer look at the category section. This section is fairly straightforward, but I wanted to show how easy it is to add a new category and also demonstrate something that you should be cautious with. To add a new category, click on the plus button at the bottom left of the section. This just creates a new entry to the list. Click the select a category set button and now browse through the options and select which one fits. The categories available are not structured in the same way as the navigation on the left because this is using the standardized structure from freedesktop.org and the categories on the left are a limited version that has been predetermined by the distro you use. Deleting a category is simply selecting the category from the list and clicking the minus button. Now for the part I mentioned about being cautious. This button to the right of the minus button isn't very obvious for what it does and it doesn't tell you if you hover the button. This is a delete all button and a perfect example for why changes aren't immediately saved. Next let's jump to the advanced section. Generic name is obviously the generic name for the type of application. Try exact is for setting a path to an executable that is required to exist in order for the launcher to work. This is a way to make sure the item is only added to the system menus if the executable exists and has permission to execute. Only shown in and not shown in are options to control what desktop environments have permission to display this item in their related menus. MIME types are two-part identifiers that specify the format and contents of a file. This option lets you associate file types to specific applications so they can be more easily launched directly in an app. Keywords are words or tags that make searching for an app easier. These are typically not displayed anywhere. They mostly just are used for back-end functionality. Startup WM class refers to the window manager class assigned to an application. The hidden field allows you to go farther than a hide from menus toggle because instead of just hiding from menus, this feature lets you hide the item from the system entirely. And finally, dbus activatable is an option that, if set to true, lets an application use the dbus while launching. A quick note, if you hover the names of the fields, you can find additional information. And the dbus option has a URL linked in the tooltip, but since that is not clickable, I've included that link in the video description. Now it's time to create a new entry using MenuLibre. And in this case, we're going to add an item for the open source first person shooter, Xenotic. In this video, 
I'm not going to go too detailed on how the Zenotic package is structured because I've already done that in a previous video. If you'd like to learn more about that, you can find a link to that video in the cards and in the video description. So to add Zenotic to our main menu, we'll first need to download the game. So go to Zenotic.org and click the big download button to get the static archive. Now that we've got Zenotic downloaded, we need to extract the game from the archive. So we're just going to right click and choose extract here. Back in Menu Libre, navigate to the category you want to place the new launcher in. And click the Add New button in the header bar and choose Add Launcher. First we'll name this launcher Zenotic and give it a description of first person shooter. Next let's give it an icon. Clicking on the icon gives you two options, browse icons and browse files. Browse icons is to look for an image that is already available in your icon set. Some icon sets already have an image for Zenotic like Numix. So you can use this option uh, if you're using something like Numix. Since we're not, we're going to choose Browse Files. And this way you can select any image you want to represent the game. Zenotic actually comes with a file, an icon files included. So we're going to go to the Zenotic folder and choose the logo that we want to represent it. Next, let's add a category for the game. Click the plus button at the bottom of the window, and then select Shooter from the Game section. Finally, we'll need to add the command. Here we'll need to select the .sh shell script for the version of the game that we'll be using. My computer is a 64-bit system that works best with the SDL, so I'm going to be using the .sh file for the SDL version. If you're interested in learning more about the SDL versus GLX versions, I addressed this in the same video I mentioned before, so check the video description for a link. So we're done creating the new launcher, but be sure to always remember to click the Save button before you close the application. Now we're going to edit some jump lists. Since we'll need a system that utilizes jump lists, let's jump to Ubuntu with Unity. As you can see, the actions listed in Menu Libre correlate to the actions listed in the jump list for Firefox on the Unity Launcher. To add a new action to the jump list, we'll first need to find out what kind of actions we can do. Actions are really just command line parameters being applied to an application. So in order to find out what parameters we can use, we'll need to run the tac tac help option to a command in the terminal. For example, Firefox space tac tac help reveals all of the available options that we can use for Firefox. For demonstration purposes, let's use the tac tac safe tac mode parameter to create an action for opening Firefox in safe mode. Click the plus button at the bottom left. Let's give it a name of open in safe mode. Now let's give it the command of Firefox space tac tac safe tac mode. Now here's where it gets a bit confusing. At the bottom of the window, you can see that the location of the .desktop file is user share applications. This means that the file that is loaded in the launcher right now is the system file, not the file with our changes. This is not much of a problem, but in order for our changes to be displayed, we'll have to get the new .desktop file loaded rather than the system file. So I'm going to save the changes that I've made with the new action and show you that the jump list has not been updated. But what has been updated is the location of the .desktop file to now in the .local hidden file folder in my home folder. There are three ways to update the .desktop file that work in all GTK based distros. And there are specific ways to do it in Unity and GNOME. The options that work in all distros are log out and log back in, restart your computer, or you can manually remove the system launcher and manually add the new launcher. I'd say the easiest solution is probably just restarting your computer, unless your distro provides another way. The option for Ubuntu users is to restart Unity. To do this, just press the Alt F2 combination on your keyboard and type in Unity 
tac tac replace. This will restart the Unity process, and sometimes this does some weird stuff, but it should work just fine afterwards. This action of restarting your computer or restarting Unity is only needed this one time. Once you have the new .desktop file loaded, all future edits to the jump list will be displayed immediately after saving. So let's say you want to add another action. For example, open Firefox's Profile Manager create a new, sh uh, new action or give it the name profile manager and then we're going to give it the command Firefox tag tag profile manager and as you can see it's not listed here but as soon as we click save there it is GNOME's jump list can be reloaded in a simple way as well in fact, more easily than Unity's. Once you have made and cha saved your changes in Menu Libre, you'll need to restart the GNOME shell. As you can see, the safe mode item is not in the jump list. But now let's uh, press Alt F2 combination on your keyboard and type the letter R. Yeah, just the letter R and press Enter. Now the new action will be available in the jump list. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a like, and maybe share it too. If you'd like to see more Linux related videos from me, please subscribe. And as always, keep using, learning, and enjoying Linux.